All right, in this video, let's walk you through the next step of data preparation. So as a reminder, we're in the data preparation phase. We've talked about importing data. We've talked about reducing data. Now let's talk about what to do with missing data. So to do this, I actually want to use a different data set. I'm going to get rid of movie ratings, duplicates, and uh, I'm going to keep my select columns in here for a moment. But I want to change the data I'm using from the bike buyers data set, which we've been using in other videos, to, let's break this down like you might be more used to. We're going to use a data set that is available on uh, Kaggle.com for free. It's a lending club data set of actual lending club loans that have been given out, anonymized of course. And uh, here we go, it's LC underscore loans. That's got the data we're looking for. So let's adjust our SQL or you can import the, uh, the CSV file if you're having trouble connecting to the SQL. Um, if you're using the book you'll find this uh, the CSV version of that data file near this video or in the description if you're on a YouTube. But for here, let's pull all from Lending Club Loans and then let's choose what data we want out of that. Use cache results, perfect. So select columns is not going to work because I've got all my old bike buyer stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is pull all this out and it doesn't know what it's about to get. Uh, it thinks it's going to have this because that's from a previous cache result, but because the import data hasn't run, it doesn't know what it's looking for. So I'm going to simply, uh, actually, I guess I'm going to have to take this one off entirely. So we'll just import data right now. So let's run this and pause. All right, let's finish running. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Results data set. Okay, we have a loan ID, a loan status. And I added this in here. Uh, we'll use this data set later in the course as well. I gave it a loan status that's numeric, where um, a higher number equals a better status, like fully paid, and a lower number equals a worse status, like charged off. So the statuses range from 3 to negative 3, with a lot of other statuses in the middle. Of course, most of them are going to be fully paid or charged off because loans have been completed. This includes a ton of loans. But it also includes active loans with other statuses, like uh, current. So current is a 2. It's not quite as good as fully paid. Um, however, as we'll learn later in this course, this field is problematic because by labeling fully paid as a three and current as a two, that implies that being fully paid is one unit or one digit or one integer greater than being current. But not all current customers are the same. Some have been current for one month, some have been current for 59 months. Uh, so there's some problems there. Anyway, we'll return to that issue later. For now, look at what else we have. Loan amount, funded amount, term, how long the loan will be, interest rate, installment, that's their monthly payment, grade. So uh, these companies sell their loans often. And so loans are given a grade based on what interest rate they're able to get the customer to accept uh, compared to their likelihood of paying it off. So uh, that's what grade refers to. Out principal. So outstanding. This is how much principal is left on the loan. It's zero if it's fully paid. And this is a loan that is still in process of being paid. Uh, total payment. Uh, total number of payments, total payment um, uh, amount of payments made, including both interest and principal, total received principal, total received interest, lots of information about the loan, but then you get some more stuff about like uh, this stuff that would, would have been collected when they applied for the loan. What do they do for a living? How long have they been doing that? Do you own or rent a home? That has a lot to do with uh, our, the data science of the past has shown that that indicates or is an indicator of whether or not someone will pay. Someone responsible enough to own their own home or have a mortgage is, generally speaking, don't take this personally if you rent, because this is just generally speaking, more likely to pay off a loan than those who rent. Um, usually that has to do with people who are older, uh, own or have a mortgages, they've been around longer, they're making more money, they've got better jobs because they've been around longer. That's that's really what it uh, comes down to. Well, partly. Anyway, here's their stated annual income. And then was it verified? Not verified, verified. And then there's even a source verified, which means that we called up their... Uh, verified means we got their W-2. Source verified means we also called their employer to see are they still employed or do they quit their job barely? Sometimes people apply for a loan right after quitting their job with no intentions of paying you back and that type of thing. Uh, this is a number of characters in the description of the loan which, where's the actual description? It's in here somewhere. Title of the loan, purpose of the loan, and this is 13 categories that they could choose from that are predefined by Lending Club. 
where they live. DTI, debt to income ratio. So this is a derived field from a credit report that is their, uh, a score representing their total debt divided by total income, uh, representing their percent of available, uh, actually no, sorry, this is representing the percent. So think of this as 20.82%. This is the percent of their monthly income that is currently dedicated to other loan payments. So how much debt are they already paying? So this person is only spending 6% of their monthly income, income on other loan payments. That's a more useful figure than their income alone and their total debt alone, right? Knowing the percent. So this is from their credit report, their number of delinquencies in the last two years. When was their first credit line? How long have they had credit? Number of credit inquiries, inquiries in the last six months. Months since last delinquency. Here's where clean missing data becomes relevant. All right, months since last delinquency. So is a higher number here better or worse? Higher numbers are better. That means that it's been a longer time since the last time I was delinquent on an account. Well, look at all these blanks. What's the deal here? Did we just forget to collect that data? No. What it is is these are people who have no delinquencies on their credit report at all. Look right here. Or, actually... No, sorry, that's inquiries. Where's the delinquencies? Over here. So here where there's a 1 in the last two years, this number right here is going to be something less than 24, right? Because this only counts delinquencies in the last two years, but this is total months since their last delinquency. So this one says 0 here, but that makes sense because it's been over four years since their last delinquency. So the longer the better, but these people with blanks have not had a delinquency in the last seven years. How do I know it's seven? Well, because uh, credit reports by law uh, eliminate data after uh, that's older than seven years. They don't keep that. So it's possible these people had a delinquency seven years ago or, or more than seven years ago. So what do, we, what do we do? If we leave these blank and then we try to use this column in an analysis to predict whether or not they're going to pay off their loan, it's not going to work. It's going to eliminate this record. And we're only going to be able to analyze people who have a delinquency in the last seven years. Well, we don't want that either. We want to compare them to people who've never had a delinquency. What we need to do is decide how to handle this missing data. So let me show you our options now. Let's pull in the clean missing data pill. Here it is. Let's connect the dots. Take the output from here. It's an input into clean missing data. So here's our properties over here, our options. We've got uh, launch a column selector. This is to choose which column we want to address or handle. So let's launch that and say by name. Now we're able to use by name, remember, because we ran the import data pill first. So it knows what we have. By default, it says, well, let's handle all your missing data at once. No, clearly, we're not going to apply the same rules to everything. Let's do these uh, one at a time. Uh, in this video, I won't go through all of them, though. But let's just address months since last delinquents. Uh, delinquency, OK. And months since last record. So the difference is a delinquent account is an account that where they've reported that you're over 30 days past due. Record has to do with like um, a bankruptcy. Uh, that, that's different from a delinquency. I think a record could also refer to if someone puts a, um, like if you owe a medical bill, that's not like a credit card and you haven't been paying the medical bills, they could report that to your credit. That could be a record. So it's just a similar, um, something similar to delinquency, but it follows the same rules. Anything over uh, 84 months or seven years is not kept, and it, there's a, a null or an empty there. So we're, let's work on addressing those two fields. So it says, all right, missing uh, value ratio. So uh, minimum and maximum missing value, re value ratio. So this has to do with, uh, well, actually, let me pull it up for you. Uh, not kurtosis. It's right here. I want to get you used to coming back here whenever you're wondering about something that Azure does. Uh, you can come here to this list of, of modules or, or pills, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about it. So let's pull up the clean missing data. It says there it is right there. Beautiful. Okay, and it gives me a complete description of everything. To replace missing values, apply clean transformation. Let's do, uh, let's go to, there we go. Minimum and maximum miss, minimum uh, ratio. For minimum missing value ratio, specify the minimum number of missing values required for the operation to be performed. So for example, uh, if if there's, you may not want to apply this rule if there's only a tiny bit of missing data. So for example, if only 
um, if only 5% of your, of your data set is missing data, I may choose to just not worry about it and ignore or eliminate those 5%. One, or the maximum missing value ratio is what's the highest. So if more than, um, so let's say if more than 80% uh, of the data is missing, we might just want to eliminate the whole column. Now in our case, that's not true. We have a certain rule we want to apply, but let's say the issue is different. Let's say that we had a field like gender and our web form to collect information was broken and over 80% or uh, yeah, 80% of the data was simply not entered correctly or and it, and it was missing. We could say, look, just ignore it. And maximum missing value, put 0.8 here. Uh, if, if it's more than 0.8 or if it's less than 0.1, we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna ignore the missing value problem and it'll ignore those records in our later analyses. But in our case right now, we want zero to one. That covers the entire gamut. That basically says if there's even one record missing or if all records are missing, apply this logic. Okay, so what logic? Right down here. So we have these seven, eight options here for how to handle missing data. In our case, what we want is a custom substitution value. We simply want to say, and this is a business decision. This isn't a hard and fast rule. This is my personal opinion on how to handle this. I think we should take anyone who's blank and put the number 84 in there. The reason why is because then we're saying that those people who are empty, it's been at least 84 months since their last uh, non-payment. Well, some of them are a lot more than 84 months or have never had a late payment. Is that fair? Not really. However, my guess is from doing enough analyses that putting a number as high as 84 in there is it's going to treat all of those people the same and it's going to treat them better than those who have when, and when I say better it's going to say that they're more likely to pay off their loan it's going to treat them differently than those who have a smaller number in here the problem is that if I leave these blank it'll just ignore all the data if I don't put something in there so if I put something in there it should be a higher number which indicates that they're the higher the number here the more likely they are to pay off their loan so that's how I'm going to handle the missing data. I'm going to use uh, 84. So let's process this, let it run, and then let's talk about the other options we have. Okay, so let's take a look at the output. So clean missing data has two outputs, the cleaned data set and the cleaning transformation. This is just the set of rules we used to apply. We can save it as a transformation. Let's not get into what that means right now or worry about it. Let's just look at the cleaned data set. This is what comes out of the number one side. So it pulls through, notice all the other fields that were in there, it brings them through. It doesn't mess with them or touch them. If they weren't included in our select columns of the clean missing data pill, it just ignores it and leaves it alone. Here though, are the two fields we told it to clean the missing data for. Notice now that what used to be blanks or empties are all now 84s, indicating that for these people, it's been longer since their last delinquency or record. So that's how custom substitution works. Let's, let me explain your other options here. So replace using, in the old days, um, we might, well, depending on, let's say that uh, we only had a tiny bit of missing data, we might say just remove the entire row. Or if we had a ton of missing data, like more than 90% of it is missing, I might say remove the entire column if it's missing. Um, other older options include replacing with the mean, median, or mode. So hopefully you know, understand what those are. Take a look at some Look those up if you're not sure, but it's a way of saying, okay, we're not sure what the value should be, so let's just put in the average value for everyone in that spot. Well, that's good in that it lets you use that record. It won't eliminate the record, but the problem with that is that it's gonna push all of your analyses or predictions toward the mean, which may not be accurate. So it's this trade-off. If I have a ton of missing data, I probably just wanna remove or eliminate it. But if I only have a little bit of missing data, I might go ahead and replace with the mean, median, or mode. Well, we actually have better options now than we used to in the past. In particular, replace using mice or replace using probabilistic PCA. I No way I can get into the math on these right now, but let me explain conceptually what these will do. These will take all of the other values from all the other fields, look at those, and then predict what that value would be. That's way better than using the mean. So for example, let me come to this, let me give you uh, an example here. Let me go all the way back before we clean the data to import data though. 
so this first person right here charged off, or the second one. Let's take a look at that one. Let's say we don't know that they're going to be a charged off yet. We just look at what they wanted it for, debt consolidation, debt loan. Uh, we see it's been a long time since their last delinquency, last record. However, let's see, not a lot of open accounts. What's their DTI look like? Uh, where'd that go? Oh, there it is. DTI is pretty high. It's a 20. High, relatively speaking. This is not including um, housing, which when we talk about including housing, then debt to income ratios are up around the 20 to 45 range. But anyway, 20 is high compared to a lot of others. So we might be able to look at that value and some other values and take a better guess and predict that this person is likely a maybe a 20 on their month since last delinquency. Well, uh, that's if we didn't have a rule. That's if we didn't know that a, a blank there meant that it's been longer than 84 months. I like this rule better because we know what that means, but sometimes you have missing data simply because someone didn't enter it or there was a technical bug or something like that. In that case, using mice or probabilistic PCA is a much smarter way to predict what value should be in there. Now, when would I not use these? I would not use these if more than half the data was missing on a particular record. So on this record, right here in the middle, most of it's there. Almost everything else is filled in, so I'd be comfortable using probabilistic PCA or mice. But if more than half of the data in that row was gone, I would say, you know what, let's just eliminate the row. Delete the row or remove it entirely, and that'd be a safer call. Anyway, these are our various options for handling missing data. I've not even scratch the surface on all the possible contexts or situations you might use it in, but I just want you to be familiar with what your options are for how to handle it.